Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotion. It is Saturday, June 26th. Uh, we're getting to the end of, uh, of Matthew. There's uh, 28 chapters of Matthew, and we're, get, we're in, starting in chapter 27, so only two more chapters left. I uh, hope you've learned something. Good morning, Marcy. I hope you've learned a lot about Jesus. Remember, the gospel is called the Good News, and the Good News is about Jesus. This is why we went through the book of Matthew. This is why on Collision now on Sundays we've started a, a study in the book of, of, uh, of Luke, the Gospel of Luke. We're going to learn as much as we can about Jesus. So we're at a point now here where we're going to talk about, uh, about Judas. Uh, so I'm going to read it and then we're going to ask ourselves some questions here. It says, early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 silver coins to the chief priests and elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have, betra I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hung himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said, It is against the law to put this into the treasury since it is blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. This is why it has been called the field of blood to this day. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the thirty silver coins, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used him to buy the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now, interesting, some interesting things in this reading, okay? Reading this, it just, it just appears that Judas had remorse. Uh, the, the, the thing that we talked about with Peter, that Peter had remorse for his sins, what we talked about yesterday with, with King David, uh, who committed terrible sins, but had deep remorse uh, as, over the sins. Well, well, look at here. Judas had so much remorse that he returned the money. He, uh, he, he had so much remorse that he literally took his own life, hung himself. So the question is, was Judas saved at the end? Good question. Let, let's look at some of the things that Jesus said about 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 John about him though in, in the book of John in chapter 6 verse 7 he says then Jesus replied have I not chosen you the 12 yet one of you is a devil he meant Judas the son of Simon Iscariot who though one of the 12 was later to betray him here here I mean Jesus calls Judas a, a, a devil holy smokes that, that's strong language in, in chapter 12 we read about him being a, being a thief. Remember the, the, the Martha that anoints Jesus' feet with, 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 with rich, uh, expensive perfume? Um, then it says here in, in verse 4, But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. So here we find out that he, he's a, th a thief. In, in chapter 13, this is really strong language now here. Uh, this is where Jesus is, Jesus is celebrating communion with the disciples. And, uh, and he's talking about somebody that would betray him. Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread... <clears throat> When I have dipped it into in the dish, then dip in the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. Wow, Jesus called him a devil, and now here he is being possessed by Satan himself, not just by a demon, but by Satan himself. And then in chapter 17, Jesus, there's a prayer in chapter 17 where Jesus prays for his disciples a lengthy prayer where he prays for his disciples. And in verse 12, it says this. Jesus says, While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost 
except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. Here he talks about Judas being lost. So from the descriptors and what Jesus said about him, it appears that he was unsaved. So the, so which one is it? I mean, he had remorse. The one question that I get asked a lot, I get asked an awful lot, good morning, John, is, is whether certain people will go to heaven. Uh, do, will Jehovah Witnesses go to heaven? Will Mormons go to heaven? Uh, I, I, will Buddhists, will, will all Islamic people, will, will, they, will they go to heaven? Do they have any chance of going to heaven? And all I can say is that there are many, many scripture that, that describe what a Christian looks like, what it means to, 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 to accept Jesus, to give your life to Jesus. Uh, scripture is full of, with, those, with those scriptures. But, but I'm sure that many of you probably questions whether you meet those requirements. I, I, I hear people all the time saying, you know, I'm not sure if I'm saved. Well, if I was, I don't think I'd be doing this or I wouldn't be doing that. So we even question our salvation. So this is what I do know. Okay, this is what I do know. This is what I this is what I tell people when people ask me about whether certain people are going to go to heaven or not. I tell them, well, well, this I know. Okay, I know that God, God is going to be the judge of people. God is going to be the judge of people. God is a perfect judge. Perfect. Okay, cannot make a mistake. Incapable of making a mistake. Who are we to judge? We're, we are capable of making mistakes. If we were to do the judging, we would make all kinds of mistakes. How many times have you made judgments and found out later that you were completely wrong? Well, God cannot be wrong. So God will judge everyone perfectly. I will let him be the judge. I choose not to be the judge. I, I'm sure that on Judgment Day, we're, we're going to be surprised that some of the people that are going to be going into heaven and some of the people that are not going to be going into heaven, we're going to be shocked because we judge on human standards and emotions. We, we can't judge perfectly like God can. So did Judas, did Judas, was he saved? Well, he had remorse for his sins. I'll let God be the judge. Certainly not me. Certainly not me. I will let God be the judge of, of Judas. And that goes for everyone else in this world. I choose not to be the judge. So when I hear certain people, and I've just recently heard from this person that, that, that was convinced, convinced that everybody that commits suicide goes to hell, <clears throat> and totally convinced of that. Uh, I've heard people say they're totally convinced that anybody who's homosexual is automatically going to, cannot be saved. I've, I've heard all kinds of judgments from people on who's saved and who's not saved. I choose not to make those judgments. I choose not to make them. I, I am not a perfect judge. God is the perfect judge. Now, certainly God gives us criteria here in the scriptures, but at the same time, it, 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 people say all the time, what, what about the people in, in other countries that have never had the chance to hear about Jesus? What about all the people in the Old Testament that weren't even aware of Jesus yet? How, how are they judged? I don't know. But I know that God is going to do the judging, and I know that God is a perfect judge, and I know that God is incapable of making a mistake, so everybody will be, ju be judged equally, fairly, and rightfully by God himself, through Jesus, who is God in the flesh. So, let us not make judgment. Let us not make judgment on people. We, we don't know. I mean, look, look at... Look at the thief on the cross. The thief on the cross that at the last minute, at the very last minute, 
gave his life to Jesus, and Jesus told him, today you will be with me in paradise, just by acknowledging Jesus. So we don't know what people say on their deathbeds. We don't know. We can't read people's hearts like God can. Some of us question our own salvation. God is the perfect judge. Amen? Thank you for watching. Uh, tomorrow is collision. Uh, I'm excited about tomorrow. God has a powerful message for us that, uh, that really challenged me, and I'm convinced will challenge you. And I'm praying that God will heal many people uh, tomorrow. So if you're watching this, make certain that you, if you have loved ones, if you have loved ones, I'll make certain that they come tomorrow if you can. Do everything you can to try to convince them to come. That's what I plan on doing. So God bless you. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And I hope to see many of you tomorrow at Collision, tomorrow night. Otherwise, I'll see you Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Have a great weekend. God bless you all.